Capital gains on the rise, crypto under attack. Don't worry, the Rise Up Morning Show is back. We're here to answer your crypto questions, round out the week with some good vibes, and help you, yes, you, navigate the crypto space safely. My name is Evan, and this is the Rise Up Morning Show. We're here Monday through Thursday, live on TikTok, bringing you helpful news, commentary, answers to your crypto questions, and lots of smiles along the way. If you haven't already, please do me a favor and sign up for the Rise Up Morning Show newsletter. I am preparing the next issue to go out. It's gonna be a good one. And we're gonna throw up another tutorial on the YouTube video, so, uh, on the YouTube video. A tutorial video on the YouTube, so make sure you subscribe to that too if you haven't already. If you're joining for the first time, leave me a comment, say hi, let me know if it's morning where you are, and if you have any questions about crypto, talk about it. I'm Evan. He's Alex. How you doing, brother? So far, so good. So far, so good. And there's Tori. Good morning, Tori. Bitcoin doing its dip. How exciting. Yeah, we've had a, a kind of a volatile week uh, since the halving. Not, uh, not intense drops, but, you know, some ups and downs, huh? Yeah, I mean... Uh... Far be it from us to make predictions, but this is kind of what we figured we would see. A bunch of bunch of chop, you know, a little bit, a little bit unsure what we're doing. So it's right up, right on schedule, I guess. Right on schedule. I got some stats for you, really quick. Check this out. This is coming to you courtesy of the Coinbase the Coinbase Bytes newsletter. Uh, probably one of the only other newsletters I would read <laughs> that I don't hate. Um, numbers to know. $8,450, Alex, is the approximate cost of a fidgetal Louis Vuitton leather varsity jacket designed by Pharrell Williams, the fashion house's creative director, sold as physical apparel and an accompanying NFT that enables holders to buy the garment on a token-gated website. Interesting. Uh, what's Pharrell, the token, did it say? I'm sorry, what's the token? Yeah. Uh, let's see. According to... Louis Vuitton NFTs are back. This is an article in Vogue Business. It's a Western inspired jacket that actually looks fantastic. I'm going to give you a little looky loo here. Check it out. Looks like this. Mm. And I just want to show you this handsome man wearing it. We got the leather stitch, the shoulder. And according to this article, let's see if they'll tell us where we can buy it. Uh, latest product drop, nods to Cowboy Fever. The jacket originally appeared in their autumn winter 2024 runway show. Sold as a physical garment, yes, 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 via a token gated website. I am not sure if they're gonna tell us. Um, I wonder, uh, if you'll remember, they sold those, those treasure trunks last year. That was like their foray into NFTs for almost 40,000 euro. And they yeah. were sold bound, non-transferable. Just a couple hundred of them. You had to apply to get one. And it looks like these are for sale, but it doesn't say how or where yet. Mm. Um, I would imagine that you would drop the link to your trunk holders, um, that the trunk would be used as the token gate. But look at Pharrell being a cowboy. Ooh, I like that. Um, uh, is it gonna tell me? Is it gonna tell me? That's all right. No, no, it's not gonna tell me this time. Uh, but if you've got $8,400 and you don't wanna buy the Bitcoin dip, you could go potentially buy one of these Louis Vuitton jackets with an NFT. Uh, two more numbers for you. 71 is the number. 71 consecutive days that BlackRock's spot Bitcoin ETF recorded net inflows. This is per like Tuesday. I think it's been up since then also. Um, that puts them in the top 10 of ETFs with the longest inflow streaks. The number one is the JP Morgan Equity Premium Income ETF. It had 160 days of inflows. So we're halfway there, uh, living on a prayer. The next number is 2.5% of NFT holders are responsible for 50% of all transactions on secondary markets right now. So while we have seen an increase in wallets holding cryptocurrency in the last couple months, it still seems 
there's just a handful of folks who are creating most of the volume. I'm honestly not surprised by that. Um, I don't know if there are uh, big old numbers that you want to tackle, but those are my numbers for the morning. Do you have a number for uh, for for uh, Joe Biden's proposed capital gains increase? I can't believe no. that, man. Well, it's the same. Sh this happens all the time. It's this. I don't even think this is news. It was purposefully. So a couple things to be aware of. It was purposefully released without any of the income um, income thresholds. Capital gains is not a straight number. I just did this in a video because there were like 20, 30 comments on my tax video. Helpful video. About, um, you know, how all capital gains is taxed at 40%. It's not, it's not remotely true. And the vast majority of people in this country actually have to pay zero. Um, and then almost everybody else pays 15% um, or less. So this new one actually really doesn't change anything unless you're making one, a net taxable income of over $1 million. Uh, and even if that is you, the new proposed rate, which is literally just a proposal means nothing would have to go through both houses of Congress more than once without getting <laughs> completely eviscerated, which will never happen. Ask yourself, if you think there is even the slightest chance that Congress gives Biden a tax win <laughs> in an election year, like it would never happen. Um, anyway, even, even if, even if this was a coherent plan with real numbers in it and it went to Congress and they passed it and it went to Biden and he signed it, first of all, it wouldn't take effect for a while. Uh, second of all, it would only apply to people who make over, a million and oh. the new rate would only apply to the money that you make beyond the million. It's not like this is one thing that I think is classically misunderstood about um, tax brackets. If you make above a threshold, the <coughs> amount of money that you make above that threshold is what gets taxed there. So like if Evan makes one and a half million dollars a year, that half a million that goes over the one million, that half a million, that's what gets tagged. The rest of it below that doesn't. So just keep that in mind. Unless any of you are secret millionaires making millions of dollars a year, none of this would ever apply to you. And two, this isn't a real proposal because none of those numbers were included. All that we heard was that the top of the top would be raised to 49 uh, or to, yeah, whatever, whatever they stuck it to, some ludicrous number. Um, but I would, this is a non, it's a non story. That's one of the right. things I want to talk about today. So it's really, honestly, that would be, I think, I think that would be like, a, that'd be a proposal I'd be in favor of. Like, you know, we're always talking about raising taxes on the wealthy and it, it, you always say, Alex, it's a great reminder that if you're paying taxes on profit, you made profit. So, you know, I think that, uh, it, it just makes sense that we put the burden on people who are making more profit. Uh, not that it would inhibit them from making that profit, but that uh, we, if we got to have taxes, you know, let's be, let's distribute it well kind of thing. Um, yeah. 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 I, uh, I saw me here post about it and I was like, Oh no, but that doesn't sound so terrible at all. Well, like I said, it's not even a real proposal. It was just meant to get a bunch of headline. Think, think about what bill they just passed. Yeah. And now yeah, think about how desperately they want to take attention away from it. So what's the surefire way to distract people from the fact that one, nearly every major college campus across the United States yesterday held a drag out protest that got shut down by state police and National Guard? Um, I don't know. Let's piss everyone off with taxes really quick in, in, no. like, in a way that actually doesn't really affect anybody. Yeah, you're right about that. You're, Alex, all... what, about, what about using a crypto card to pay for things? If I'm using my crypto to pay for stuff, can I avoid taxes? No. Why not? No. Because all of those cards have to be linked to some kind of service and all of those services in order to distribute that card to an American has to register with the IRS uh, <laughs> and the SEC if they're buying and selling cryptocurrency at any stage of that whole thing. Uh, and since there are no services that I know of, um, I would... 
I'm open to be corrected if this is not true anymore, but every single uh, crypto related card service actually does not pay for things in crypto. They just do the transaction for you. So you get the feeling of spending cryptocurrency on something. But on the back end, the credit card company or the debit card company or whoever it is, is selling whatever asset you need to facilitate that transaction and they pay the vendor. Um, so yeah, it's you, got it. you, but, but no, the short answer is you absolutely can't pay taxes doing it that way. Yeah. Yeah. It's not that it's not that the other thing too, is just like, you know, your, all your crypto trades on an exchange or when you get to the bank to cash out your crypto, if that's what you're going to do at some point are being tracked by a company who is registered to report that to the IRS. And our recommendation to make it easy for crypto people is use a software like Coinly that is going to connect to all those services. And instead of having to go back and manually track, where did I spend it on? Was it income? Was it profit? Was it a loss? It'll just put it right into TurboTax for you. And then all you got to do is kind of go back, look over it, correct it. Um, Coinly is spelled with a K. K-O-I-N-L-Y. The show is not sponsored by them, but it could be. And uh, Alex, it happened again. Uh, Warby Parker is jumping to the top of my list for the sponsors I'm ready to reach out to because, yes, I, I know we have the same glasses and you can get them too. The unofficial official glasses of the Rise Up Morning Show at WarbyParker.com. Not sponsored, but it should be. I'm clipping it, man. That's got to be... That's gotta be the 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 50th time <laughs> every time um uh, man yeah the other the other thing that i was going to bring up just because we talked about it several times um and now it's like official official um news flash if you have followed us before and you watch the show and you listen and you've heard us talk this is not a surprise to you but Sinkus Dow turned out to be a giant steaming pile of shit, just like we've been saying it was. Oh, really? Yeah. I missed it. What happened? A uh, large pile of hefty influencers have been shilling this fucking garbage for a while. Yeah. Um, yeah. We've constantly been saying, I mean, dude, some of these people were even still telling their followers that they were bullish on it after they just randomly dropped a huge sell tax uh, on everyone that they didn't advertise. So they, you know, they changed, they changed the, uh, the contract code to um, institute a huge sell tax. And I saw multiple large crypto related influencers who even post sales tax still said they supported it. A uh, lot. I dude, I'm sure that so many, people got screwed listening to those guys. Uh, and yesterday, um, I don't even, what's it, Coach Ty, who's like a million plus followed crypto influencer. Um, he's a shill. Uh, he made like an apology video about how he got hosed too, but he took profit, but he got hosed too. And he's right there with you. And I'm just like, I don't know. I feel, I feel it sucks because I know that a lot of people don't see the other messages because there's nothing sexy. There's nothing hooky about a video that is like trying to tell you to stop listening to the guys giving you coin picks. And yet consistently everyone who listens to the guys that give you coin picks just get fucked. So I really hope that sync is rugging essentially. Um, it's not a true rug pull they they're just letting it die but it's not going anywhere and they're abandoning it and it's it's over and it's whatever and all of the big guys are now like whoops sorry um stop just please please stop listening to them please call them out please make people feel awkward and uncomfortable for shilling stuff like yeah. that like i so the the do your own research and not financial advice dog whistles are that's literally what they are those are fucking those are dog whistles in bad content that let you know like i'm about to financially advise you and yeah. you don't need to do the research because i'm going to tell you what's what it's it's code if that was the video if that was the point of the video they wouldn't say anything else about it they would say hey i just discovered this project this is what it's called i don't know anything about it yet but let's all go look into it uh and meet back here same time tomorrow and discuss that's how the video would go and it wouldn't get any views and i know because i make that video 
So if you have someone who's like, this is amazing, quote, there is no way this doesn't go to a hundred million dollar market cap. That was said mm -hmm. at all time high for Sink is Dow. That was, that's a quote by one of these large influencers. There's no way it doesn't go. That's, that's. And stop. people are doing Anyone this. Anyone who says that is not your friend. Anyone who says that is not your friend. They're leading you astray. Like, yeah. Don't, they're doing this don't on do camera it. with conviction and confidence. They look good when they say it, they're flashing the money. So it's easy to, to feel influenced by it, but please like, don't, don't allow yourself to be, um, what's that Alex? I want to speak to Trailer Park Crypto and say, uh, big W on the L. I wish it was an NFT. Um, they saw H bar going through the roof. Bought at eighteen, sold at sixteen, lost a thousand dollars. You know, you know, buy at the top, sell, sell at the bottom, man. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, I wish there was a token for it. I wish I could give you a token for that. Uh, if you want to mint a token for that, the place to do it is Zora. If you're not on Zora yet, that's a that's like the crypto native Instagram. You absolutely should take a screenshot of that and say, bought at the top, sold at the bottom, make it a free mint. And I bet, I bet 20 other people would claim it on HBAR Twitter and you might make, you know, 0.1 ETH to get, to get some of your money back. Sorry it happened, brother. Oh my gosh. Sink is down. Yeah. Well, it's just it, the code, the secret code on this is that if you ever see a project that is being talked about by more than one large influencer, it is a paid promotion. Okay. They didn't all just discover it at the same time. They all got reached out to at the same time. Um, so they, they'll make that video, which will then start the hype cycle. The hype cycle is not sustainable. And I swear to you every single time it will die. Every time it will die. And when it dies, and the attention goes away, people will take their profits. The project will get really like downtrodden. They will get, they'll lose all of their momentum and they will stop. And then the project is over and then a new one will come out. Uh, just, I don't know it. I think, I think everybody knows how I feel about it. It makes me very sad. Makes you a salty, not a salty bag holder, but a salty, I don't know what the equivalent is when you're, when you're a salty, uh, you know, responsible educator, but I get you, I get you. Okay. Man. I'm a, I'm a curmudgeon about it. You are a curmudgeon. We're both curmudgeons about it. We'll be, we'll be sitting here drinking our coffee, yelling at these kids to get off our lawn when we're old and we're, we're, you know, we're not even there yet. Um, I see our friend Tommy is in the comments. Hey Tommy, what's going on, man? Thank you for the good comment. Um, if you are, are looking for help with crypto content, Tommy is somebody I would recommend who speaks about this stuff. Well, um, who uh you know, you know what's a really good side by side evan which what's that for tommy for us no for just my my nightcap my my cherry on top of this little rant right here Tommy. so <clears throat> yikes first of all someone clipped <laughs> that um <laughs> you heard it here first folks <laughs> jesus christ evan listen man you gotta do it for the culture <laughs> I thank God I did not take a sip right before that. That would be <laughs> it was hard to hold it in, man. <laughs> that, would have been, that would have been painful. Um, well, all right. Talk about getting derailed in a big way. Go ahead, give me your cherry. <laughs> Evan! <laughs> son of a bitch. I couldn't resist. I'm so sorry. <laughs> okay. The Holy shit. All I was going to say <laughs> is, um, all right, you know what? <clears throat> all I was going to say is if you want, if you want to hear someone talk about uh, a crypto, this is, it's a skill. It is a skill to talk about a specific project without it coming across or without it being presented as like a straight advertisement um, for the thing. If you want to see it done well, go watch and I, i'm not going to name a crypto but because he's got a shitload go watch a video that mac puts up they're long they're like more than a minute more than two minutes long 
and he breaks down the project and explains like why he likes it, why he doesn't like it, what his reservations are, what he's planning on doing about it, all of that kind of, it's a very different style. Di- then go watch literally any one of those who I just saw. Ty, Calvin, BitBoy, any of those people. Um, I hate to say it, but Alex Costa was shilling Sinkus real fucking hard. Uh, go watch any of those. And you will see someone reading a brochure to you and then giving you the thumbs up and then saying not financial advice. So compare those two things. If you can find one that's about the same projects, even better. But so, you know, and obviously off of Max video, don't buy something off of his video. No, Um, let it be a jumping point for what you notice you like or don't like and look into further. But, but watch the two side by side and just compare the way that Mac talks about it. That's why I put him in that lineup uh, specifically the other day was just because when he talks about something, I, I feel like I get the brochure, the headlines, the stuff that everyone's going to be talking about. Then he takes off the first layer and he talks a little bit more about it. And then he sends you off into the world to learn um and ask him questions he'll he'll make more videos about it you know or you can he's in our discord too you can find him in there if he's got a specific one because that man <laughs> prolific um mm-hmm. here i'll put it put it down here melissa <clears throat> that's helpful that's helpful um you know it it there there is there is um a lot of noise to signal i couldn't agree with you more the the trick is really with all of it you've got to you, you've got to move into a just a better practice make it a muscle when somebody mentions something don't ask them should i buy it should i sell it let it be a jumping off point to do your own research and this is why i'm telling you you got to jump on the youtube page i know everybody's like selling you something and i'm selling you a youtube channel the next video we're releasing on our youtube channel is a process you can like copy and make your own a lot of people watching you guys you got your own kind of process, which is what you need. You need what works for you. Um, but Alex and I did a, a, a video about, you know, here are like, you hear about a token, somebody tells you about it. These are like a couple of steps you can do with a few great tools in about five minutes yep. to give yourself a better opinion. Is this for me? Should I buy? Should I sell? Am I interested in learning more? And we'll expand it over time because there's a lot of stuff that you can do. Some people are going to really want to dig in deep to the charts. Some people are really going to want to dive into the community and spend time getting to know the people, the team. Other people, they're they're going to look at, I don't know, partnerships. There's so much you can do. The important thing is to make it yours. Develop conviction about stuff. Don't rely on other people and their conviction because you know, people are, all information is persuasive. Um, everybody is selling something and the people who tell you they're not, you know, like, listen, I, I, yeah, no, that was a good cherry. I, I feel. Yeah. Topped. God, <laughs> uh, Steve, we were talking about Mac. I used Mac as an example of somebody who I think makes like a good token breakdown without giving you um, you know, weird dog whistles about it. And my, my homework was to go pick any one of his videos and then go watch any of the classic shill videos, uh, and just compare the two of them side by side. If you feel like you're watching an infomercial on QVC at two in the morning, it's a bad video. If you feel like you're sitting down for a speed lecture where someone gives you, you know, like 15 points of interest about something and then sends you off to go look at it. Um, cause Mac will like interlace those. He'll, he'll weave in, you know, like his research guide, what his methods are, what does he check? Why is he checking socials? What does he look for there? Um, he just had one like yesterday or the day before it was about like, you know, the five things that he looks for every single time or something like that. Like that's a system that you can take and replicate. Um, like you'll know, we, we do a lot of like first impressions on projects. So I always tell people the same thing you can like you can let it run the gauntlet for you before you buy something, you know? So, um, uh, our, our initial smell test doesn't last more than three to five minutes. You know, we mm-hmm. like, we don't even read the website. You just look at it at first and you're like, you know, how do you'll hear Evan and I do that all the time. What's your first impression from just looking at the website? Um, even before I get there, you know, I get a couple numbers, you know, like the first thing I want to know is like, well, am I about to waste all my time researching this thing? Like, is there even liquidity to support, 
uh, the trading on this project. So, you know, you can go look that up. I have like 10 videos, including one from yesterday. That's all about how to read a blockchain explorer. You should go check that and just, just make sure, you know, like some mystery wallets not holding 40% of the supply with no contract, right? Like little things that I want to know before I waste my time going deeper. Um, those are the, that's the time. I mean, you know, of course I'm going to advertise myself here, it's my goddamn show, but those are the kind of videos that are like, I think helpful. You know? <laughs> Okay, Not come down from your high horse. <laughs> um, you know, we I'm do feeling need to try to get him on the show again. Somebody horse. like asked about that. He's been on the show before. This is a tough time slot for him, but he's you know he's our friend, he's our colleague, and he's he's great at what he does. So um, if if that's what the people want, then the people should oh, get it. Um, uh, I love that man. For sure. we, we definitely will get him on. Somebody asked about SEI. We'll get to it in a second. I brought our yeah. friend Robbie up because he requested. Um, if you're Hi, you know, one of the community members and we know you and you've got a question, you know, this is your show. So like we, we want you to feel free to come up. If you request and we don't bring you up, it's nothing personal. We just got to protect the audience. We've had it happen more than once that somebody comes up and, and says some weird, hateful stuff and, and almost gets us thrown off the air and injures our ears in the process. So uh, please understand that. Just hang out and chat with us. And if you got a question, leave it in the comments. We will absolutely get to it. Robbie, brother, how, how's things uh, across the pond? How you doing? Uh, it's a beautiful afternoon here in Ireland. Good. I can't, I'm so I can't glad to get... hear it, man. You sound good. Can, uh, you read, can you read us a story or something? No. Uh, well, I'll tell you a story about Coinbase if you want to yes. hear that story. Perfect. Okay, I'd love to hear it. Uh, initially, when I started it a few years ago, I would have partook in anything they were doing. If there was a training thing to learn about a coin and you got a couple of tokens for it, great, I would have done it. In the last six months, I'm nearly afraid to open my Coinbase wallet because I know there's gonna be so much stuff in there that I do not want to touch. Yeah, well, sorry. Here, like, got one you've one. got Coinbase I'll wallet, second, you've got the Web3 wallet, You've got Coinbase Standard, you've got Coinbase Advanced. I was actually pleased to hear William say the other day that they're devising Coinbase Smart Wallet, which might help, but it uh, really discourages me from doing anything when you know there's so many scams hmm. and so many rip-off tokens. Like, there's tokens I can't even find how to hide. Mm -hmm. So I, I was just thinking maybe a good Coinbase mobile video would help a lot of people. Yeah, that's a good okay. suggestion. Uh, Robbie, can I ask you, have you looked into it, their new beta product called Smart Wallet? Yeah, that's what it was. Well, I was trying to find some stuff on it, but I've just stuck with the standard wallet, Coinbase, and bought spots yeah and probably okay. paid more in fees because i don't really want to go into the advanced set a load of orders up and something happened like a black swan and the price goes right down past them orders and get caught out buying on the way down yeah yeah of course um you know coinbase is not super robust in terms of if you if you've got trading rules i i think is uh have you ever used KuCoin at all? No, I have Uniswap and MetaMask, and that's just basically to buy a few new launches uh, yeah. that have come out on Ethereum. But a lot of guys have been, especially here in the UK, they're all starting to turn to base. I'll be right and back. Tom. But again, you're in the you know due diligence and not getting caught out with the new scams that you don't even have a name for yet yeah no the um it's tough i know that it's kind of a weird problem to tackle because OpenSea tried to do it and i think they did a pretty decent job you know when they did the um i forget exactly how they phrased it but they they automatically hid you know like airdrop nfts that you didn't um ask for so that you didn't like accident you had to go dig for them if you wanted to do anything with it yeah um but i'm sure that unfortunately like you know with base getting a ton of attention and, and ton is not one that i've read a ton about ever since we 
first started talking about it, but I need to because it's it's starting to get talked about a lot more. Are you are you doing stuff with Tan as well? No, I have stayed away from it as well because I don't actually like the idea of yeah. having it tied into my telegram where right. I have half a million conversations going on at once and before yeah. you know it, you that'll be that'll be their way in. Yeah. Yeah. It, you know, Robbie, I, I had two thoughts for you. The first one is in terms of like Coinbase and security, we can definitely do a tutorial on like avoiding fees or, you know, how to how to clean up some of the clutter in your wallet. But they are working on rolling out a product called Smart Wallet. It's in beta. It's going to go mainnet soon. And it's really oriented towards like people who are not crypto folks so it'll be a lot yeah. simpler it's going to be gasless it's going to have pass keys it's a custodial wallet solution uh but their goal is to make it like you don't even know you're using a wallet so that will be like if you want to be on coinbase maybe a better solution i've seen some screenshots and stuff i think it will be a little more um clean less clutter uh yeah. they're not going to show you tokens you got airdrop that you don't know about but it almost sounds like you might be well served there are such great tutorials online for KuCoin specifically, but there yeah. are others. KuCoin is just the one I'm familiar with. If what you're trying to do is some more sophisticated, like, uh, you know, trading, you want to set stops, you want to set limits, you want lower fees and just a little more flexibility. It's got an interface that's a little bit intimidating when you first sign in, but I have found that over time it's so it's, it's my favorite one to use to, you know, program a bot or set a stop loss or whatever you kind of want to do in that regard. They support a lot of different tokens on a lot of different chains. And once you get used to it, I find it's pretty intuitive to click through. You, you might give that a look. I feel like you might be, you know, ready for it. And it's, it's pretty, you know. Kind of, it, it, it's, it's annoying more in the fact that I may have earned real rewards in some way, shape or form. And I'm afraid to even look at them to see because by the time I find the one that maybe has been sent to me, I've already been drained. Does that I'm make not sure sense? I understand. You're saying you're afraid to look because you. Well, it, it, there, there's there's one at the minute in my Web3 side of my Coinbase called Toby. I've never asked for it, I've had three or four different little drops of a couple of dollars, a couple of dollars, a couple of dollars. I can't hide it. I can't do anything with it. Yeah. But it would be so good if I, if from a, from my point of view, if I could just, without signing any contracts or doing anything, just be able to burn it away yeah, to somebody, it. to somewhere else, out, yeah. out, out of my way. Yeah, I agree. I agree. It's, it's still, easy when you're moving fast to click it to do something accidental. It still yep. surprises me that we don't have a uh, turn off incoming deposits feature on a mainstream wallet yet. That seems like such a gimme to me. Yeah, that's the you know, simplest of things. But again, I think from the business point of view, Coinbase are happy that I'm just using standard because my fees are 10%, not 1% or not 0 0.1. Probably. Well, you know, let me let me look into this smart wallet solution more. I just connected with the the lead dev of that over on uh, Warpcast, and he's been asking for a lot of feedback about it. And that was one of the first things I was going to suggest and look into. If they don't have it, is why don't we have escrow? Why don't we have turn off incoming transactions? Why don't we have people want to send you this? Do you want to receive it? Here's what it is. Um, yeah. So I'll see what they say about that. Um, and and I definitely, I mean, that's got to come soon because that's a, we need that. We, I've been we wanting really to get that. into that Warpcast and I tried your referrals, but it was asking for $5. Is that just a standard fee for lifetime? You pay one time for your lifetime and what it covers is your gas on the platform so that you can do, you know, so that stuff can happen in the background on chain. I do believe, I'm not sure what you have to click to get the workaround. I do believe you can start using it without paying that though. Um, right. You may not be able to do it through a referral, though. Um, yes. Could be it. But, you know, it, it's not going to hurt my feelings if you if you don't sign up. I understand, you know, that cost is prohibitive for some people. Um, but they're very forward and transparent. Well, about it, it. It, it's, it's not that the cost. It. It's not oh. that the cost is prohibitive. It's the fear of 
you know, everything that I do, I try, well, I've really got, I have a laptop, but I try to keep it clean for doing other things. So totally. I'm, I'm totally using my mobile. So from that perspective, I would be afraid at times to even pay sure. for something simple like that. Yeah, I totally get it. I totally get it. Um, the thing about about Warpcast that's nice is this is not an on-chain fee. Um, so you can, you know, hypothetically, you can uh, pay with a card, you can pay with something, and, and they won't save it or store it. Um, and they're not, you're not connecting a wallet or anything like that. If you're, if you're using an Apple device or, or whatever, you could use Apple Pay, which again, also increases risk for an attack or something, but you could just do a one-time purchase. And I'm looking here too, they, they have talked about this fee. Um, like I said, it's, it's a, it's a sign up fee to discourage like spam accounts. Um, and they, they do stuff on chain so they, they, you're buying a storage unit essentially. And I need to check because I've heard them talk about possibly they might have to make it a yearly thing, a $5 yearly thing. Uh, but stay tuned for that. Um, yeah, I, I, I wouldn't mind that. I, I don't mind paying the $5 or whatever it is because it's another step that bots won't complete, if you know what I mean. And it's good in terms of like, I don't experience any bot traffic there. And I think it's worth it for the kind of audience you get. Like, yeah. I, Elon is pulling my teeth. I probably will never pay for Twitter unless something seriously changes. But the, just the people who are there on Warpcast, they're like the people you want to talk to if you're yeah. in crypto, especially. But increasingly yeah. more and more elsewhere too. Yeah. Um, Robbie, do you mind if we uh, move through a couple of the other questions and comments we got? You're certainly welcome to hang out and give your take. I always love having you here. And, and uh, one of these days, I agree with Alex. I would love to hear you read us all with your wonderful dialect, a bedtime story. <laughs> maybe maybe next St. Patrick's Day. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we'll have a few pints and then have a But here, just just before Robbie. you move on, just before you move on, see these guys like T Y and whoever's talking about these things. The difference that I feel is, if I met you, I would give you a hug. If I met them, I would throw stones at them. <laughs> that might uh, that's got to go on the review page. Would hug these guys and throw stones at others. Thank That's you for right. the kind words, Robbie. I really appreciate you, man. We, we love having you here all the time, and I see you pumping the likes. You always ask great questions and give good value back. So thank you for being part of the show and part of the community, man. No problem, guys. No problem. Carry on. Carry on. Sounds good. Uh, Get Player Yes, just to review, this is Smart Wallet we're talking about by Coinbase. It's a beta product right now. If you Google Coinbase Smart Wallet, verify that the URL says coinbase.com, and you can see the beta features. And I'm navigating to Warpcast right now to try and see who the developer is so you can follow that person and bug them if you have feedback um i just i just opened uh warpcast to to poke around over there too and the first thing i see on my feed this morning is just casually blow dropping a work in progress for people to listen to and that's just really cool that's and i'm sure it's a banger this is what's happening over he's like experimenting with a new style listen to this and tell me what you think and it's just like casually here you wow. go here's a free music file oh my gosh uh i'm looking i can't find this this developer's name but i can put i could put something i could put something in the newsletter about it that might be worth it i was going to do a little coinbase bites um we got to start um, we got to start doing i think like one of two things with connections like this from Warpcast. One, because, you know, it is my mission to get recognized by Dan Romero. And <laughs> I think it would be cool to do, like, for those who don't want to do the TikTok thing, to just have, like, a quick, you know, like, snippet interview, like, one or two questions uh, that could then go in the newsletter. And then um, on the other side, like, just consistently inviting people to the show. Like, there's no reason that blau what shouldn't come on the show or like gino shouldn't come on the show especially because some so of cool. talk. uh if, if blau came on the show i would definitely call him three lao at least one time and Don't say i'm so me. sorry in front of blau <laughs> for me it's such a noob um 
Uh, that would be cool. Like, and also a feature, like, because it's hard. Why do you need another social media? We talked about Dracula, by the way. Um, I got another disbursement yesterday, 10,000 DGEN, which is about $400 um, for being like an active contributing poster to the platform, like doing everything I do on TikTok, just over on Dracula. And today I need to send, I was drafting it yesterday, I'm going to send Alex, the founder, a message just with some feedback from a creator perspective. Uh, but that could be you. There's absolutely no reason that could be you. There's nothing special about what I'm doing. It would be cool to have a little segment though that's like new to Warpcast, here are some folks to follow. Uh, you know, and just, just fresh people up every week. Alex, we got a couple comments um, asking for some projects we talked about yesterday. SEI, I don't know if it's SEI or if it's Say. That's the, the, the creamy website, you remember? Yeah. And Propy. Um, we're, oh, yeah. We're glad to TLDR it for sure. Um, did you see something else you wanted to comment on first? I was just going to direct people. I'm going to yeah. have the streams up this weekend for all the shows this week so you can go back, check on it. Um, but you know, TLDR is, we can totally do it. What did you have brother? Uh, someone asked a question earlier. I don't know if you're still in here, but just about identifying organically growing memes without like heavy shilling. And I just thought it was an interesting, I like the way that question is worded. Um, yeah, I was, tr I was trying to sit here and think, you know, like, can I do, do you, does one stick out in your head of like a, I would, cause here's the thing. Sorry, let me finish. I was just blocking anything related to Amish butter. Oh. <laughs> uh, take your Those time, moderator, Alex. Prolific yesterday, just bombing every meme, screaming about butter, and I despise that shit. So I'm not, you know, Evan, I used to, like, care about trying to be polite and, like, not burn a bridge, but I'm... I'm officially uh, unhinged when it comes to this crap now. I'm so over it. I've noticed the shift. You, uh, you've entered your, uh, your like revenge era, Alex. Uh, you know, sorry, sorry, Alex can't come to the phone right now. He's dead, or whatever she I just, says. I just, uh, I just realized that there is absolutely no reason I should want to preserve a relationship with someone who is doing that. So, yeah, I was like, what am, what am I like? I want to answer this question before it goes by. Zigzag asked about the newsletter. If you want to sign up for the newsletter, it's totally free, totally brief, one time a week. Tap my face, tap Alex's face, or visit the riseupmorningshow.com. Um, if you don't have time to stream the live show, you miss a show, you don't want to go back to the YouTube, that's the best way to do it. We put a lot of uh, the links that we talk about, any projects. This week's newsletter, we're going to talk about um, just some post-Bitcoin having stuff. Uh, as well as the different things happening in the Bitcoin ecosystem, tools like Mempool that you can use to look up information there. Uh, I've got a section on how to launch a meme coin using DexLab, Pump.Fun, PartyDAO, as well as the legal disclaimers that you need to keep in mind so that you are not breaking the law. It's easy to do, uh, though seldom followed, terribly important. And absolutely, there's a section on how do you find uh, the best meme coins, whether by that you mean... Um, Tokens worth paying attention to, uh, not investing in, uh, that kind of stuff. Um, it'll all be there. And I think I'll give a nod to the meme coin scrapbook. We'll talk about Coinbase, Smart Wallet, all that yep. stuff. Tap my face, tap Alex's face, theriseupmorningshow.com. And, uh, and that's what we're going to do. We're going to send it to you. It's going to be super simple, super valuable. Um, I know a lot of people who join our show feel like they're trying to get caught up. We talk a lot of inside baseball here. We give a lot of research takes or opinions on this or that particular project. Um, the newsletter is really a good way to get locked into kind of the top level of our style of content, our ecosystem. Because if you're new to de decentralized currency, blockchains, you have a lot of questions. And there definitely is like a journey you need to take as a learner to understand this stuff beyond money and how it's going to transform the ways we interact online and increasingly off. That, that's our mission here, is to really help you understand that. Um, so if you're feeling a little lost with some of these questions, please don't give up on that. We really appreciate you being here, and we have a lot more content, especially for you in the newsletter on the YouTube page. But of course, your questions are welcome here too. No question is a bad question. Um, 
Let me let me catch up. Um, All good. I was just trying to think of um, organic <laughs> organic meme examples. Organic meme examples. I think the most organic examples I see are not are are you got to be kind of tuned into crypto culture. Yeah. Um, yeah. All right. Because there are trends that happen here that may or may not reflect the broader world. Like there will be, uh, you know, probably a resurgence in the narrative of Geo Bowden or the Donald Trump token. Um, these satirical bastardizations of popular political and cultural figures names is a moment right now. If somebody hits a particularly funny one, like it after OJ died, I'm sure somebody launched launched a uh, OG Sam Samson or something, you know, um, that would be I my think, advice. Look for culturally relevant things. Yeah, the it's an inter it's an interesting question because shilling is sort of like part of the culture, you know, like showing up somewhere. But I think there are like really specific and maybe subtle differences between like the way that it happens. Like my example the other day was um what the hell is it called? Zuck Zucko or Ducko or something. I don't know. It was a it's yeah. I don't even remember which channel it was on. But the um it was just like so aggressive, like the way that everyone was shilling it and then there was nothing else happening. And I always was like, you know, that's just gross. Uh but then if you look up like, you know, I don't know, old school Pepe. It's like a very different vibe when it's talked about on social media, like, you know, like, you know, hey, uh, trying to trying to personify this. Um, I don't know, it's not it's not like a throw it in your face. It was more like a hey, we're here. And it's it's Pepe. Don't be a loser or something. Yeah. You know, yeah. and it's it just it's like presented differently. So I don't know that I could say that there's any memes I can think of that have zero, uh, you know, shilling or like pushing on social media. But I think there are just ones that are done like in a toxic kind of cringe way. And then there are ones that are like just sort of there, like Evan said, just being culturally relevant for the time being or whatever. But, yeah. Yeah, weird, I, I just don't like it when they're so pushy. If they're super pushy, everybody in the community is you gotta buy, you gotta diamond hands, that kind of that's a that's a that's a no from me, dog. That's a top signal for sure. And I mostly am interested, if I'm in the meme coin casino, I'm mostly interested at what just got born, what's less than an hour old. Um, and that's my driving number one question aside from like, is there liquidity here? What's the activity been in the last five minutes versus the last hour? Is volume coming into or out of this token? Like those are the kind of research questions I do. But the fundamental question I ask is like, is this a good meme? Is it relevant? Does it understand the joke? Does it add a new joke in some way? And then of course, like um, cat in a dog's world to me was an example of, I think it was the first kind of in a dog's world token. Um, it started like a new meme trend. I, I didn't see you know, it was an animal. Animals are always cool in meme tokens. Um, I didn't see that one blowing up to be what it was. Don't know why it did. Sometimes that happens. Um, and of course, new ecosystems are sometimes easy because like when when base became a hot place for memes, what was it? It was everything but make it base. Uh, uh, Pepe but blue. Stuff like that. Um, you just kind of got to sit for a second and, and watch. What is the crypto community into right now? There was that sort of like racially charged trend. I don't know where that came from, um, but it was natural then when a new meme token came up that was stop the racism on soul. You just knew because it was relevant to the meme extending the conversation that people were gonna buy it. Um, like a good meme picture, you, you gotta ask yourself, is this relatable? Does it prompt an emotional reaction in the culture? Is it easy to share, extend, play off of? All those are good questions to guide you for sure. Alex, what's your, do you want to give a take real quick if, if they're still in there to the SEI folks and the Propy folks? Oh yeah. So I had a, a DM yesterday about someone asking me about something that I wanted to look into this morning. Um, I guess, through Coinbase, there's like a, some sort of a mint that you can do with affiliated with Propy. Um, and I had never heard anything about it, but I said, that sounds intriguing. Uh, and she DM me back to say that, you know, she went, went ahead and like minted the thing and it seemed to be cool. It was like a, 
it was like a hand, I think it was, you know, a handle and then maybe some sort of a deed thing and you needed to use uh, Propy's tokens to do it. But I kind of wanted to look because I had never heard of it. Um, Let's so check that's, it out. That was on my list to talk about. Okay. Let's check it out. Um, then I'm going to give my quick take on uh, SEI. Okay. Yeah, please. Um, while, while you pull it up, because I can do this in two sentences. Um, SEI has a website that actually made me hungry, but the the content on it was not that appealing to me. The headlines, the bylines, they all advertise stats. They didn't tell me what are people doing with this. Um, I compared it to a guy at a party who's bragging about being the one in the room who could bench press the most. I am more interested in and compared it to Akash. We looked at Akash yesterday too. Um, it could be that SEI is so new, they don't have a lot of uses to demonstrate, a lot of like actual stats and flags to wave, and they have to talk about transactions per second, about cheapness, about finality. Um, but in contrast to something like Akash, um, which talks about these are the things people have built on our platform. This is how many people develop on our platform every day. Like that's a stat I'm interested in. This is what they're developing. These are the people who partnered with us. These are the grants we've given. Click to read more about how people are using us and sign up to use us right now. We'll walk you through a use case. Um, stuff like that is just, it's more oriented towards solutions, what we're doing right now, um, as opposed to we're a new cool hip company, you better get in while we're young. That to me is so speculative. Um, may or may not be a good investment. It's hard to do your research and draw any conclusions from that. So SEI for me was not something at this time that I was like, yeah, I'll research that more. Um, I'm certainly open to learning about them um, and, and what they hope to do, but I'd like to see them get a clearer game plan and picture, you know? Yeah. Let me pull up Propy now and, and play along with you. Yeah, I'm trying uh, to find the... Because they, they had indicated to me that, you know, they were feeling a little bit more confident in it because it was like officially listed on Coinbase, like in the app that you could go do this thing with Propy now. But I'm finding, um, so it, it, the URL that I'm looking at right now that I'm, is pro, uh, propykeys.com. Yeah, I believe that's what their NFTs are called is Propy Keys. Yeah. This but is their website on. is propy.com. So are you sure that's a... Well, that's what I'm looking at right now because this this is a, definitely a, another website that I'm not positive on. Um, there's a... It's built on base, interestingly. Propy is? No, the keys. Interesting. While you do that, I'm going to go to Warpcast and see if I can't verify it and see if we can't just talk to the founders kind of thing. Propy Keys at Propy Keys. Bridge the home address to Web3 with Propy Keys. Mint an address. They only have 52 followers versus Propy. So here it is on the web on the actual Propy website. Um, on their blog, a blog post about the keys. But this was posted in January of this year. Um, and it's and you know what, Natalia at Propy, who I do know is a is a legit user, uh, has posted about Propy Keys linking that handle and that website on their channel. So I think PropyKeys.com is legitimate. And it looks like you can mint yours in a frame right now on Warpcast. I'm going to try and mint mine from a frame. Cool. Now, this is an interesting thing to talk about, too, because I... I don't really necessarily like the idea of broadcasting my home address on a blockchain, um, which is like a public ledger, you know? I also am curious to know how they verify this. Like, what's to stop me from minting, I don't know, the address of Trump Tower? Mm -hmm. and yeah, that claiming was, the appropriate key for it. That was know? my first question. Like, can, you know, how, do, how does my neighbor just not mint my address, you know? Interesting. Maybe I'll fudge it. Let me just see. Let me just see. Uh huh. Uh huh. This is the cool thing about Warpcast too: is people are building things in frames all the time. They just had a new one that's like your Warpcast card, and it's like 
a Pokemon card, but make it you. And it's got, you know, like your followers at the time you minted, the number of posts you've made, the number of likes you've had, and you can collect other people's. It's, you know, like you pay for the gas to mint it. It's like a couple of cents. Who knows what they're going to do? Tori said, I couldn't mint that. I haven't been able to mint it either. I think some people are having problems with it. I don't know if it's a wallet issue, a connectivity issue, or a funding issue. Like, hmm. one of the things I still have that's a question about Warpcast is, I'm pretty sure I'm connected to one of my social wallets, which has funds in it. But it's unclear to me how to like access so, that from an interface within Warpcast so that I can see, do I need to top it off? Uh, is it a different wallet? I'm still based, clear on it. Based on the blog post on Propy's website about the keys, in order to mint, you need at least 10 of their tokens plus ETH gas. Interesting. So I'm not going to be able to mint it. I don't have any Propy tokens. Maybe I'll buy some Propy tokens just so I can start playing around with that. Somebody mentioned about, this, I'm going to make the same point about Propy and, and SEI. Um, the fact that I just said I'm going to mint some Propy keys, Propy tokens to do like a Propy key thing and play around with it. That is an interesting Web3 utility. Say Propy key one more time. Propy key, Propy key, Propy key. Uh, show is not sponsored, but it could be. If the people who want to mint their addresses on chain see that so many people, as they are right now, are speculating on Propy, the token, that it drives that price up, 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 what's it going to do to their enthusiasm to play around with stuff? It's going to make it go down. I'm not going to want to buy a Propy token, spend a Propy token, when it's costly for me to do so. Um, it's a tough incentive to align. And similarly, somebody just said in the comments about SEI that it just passed SUI for market cap. So maybe they're, they're peer companies, like competitors. Just because something has a market cap that's going up, up, up is not an indicator for me that it's, first of all, if it's getting hot, got that big green candle, uh, that's maybe not my favorite time to buy because I don't know when that momentum is going to stop, but I do know that it'll probably come back down again. And especially if it's a company that looking at their website, I'm like, why are people investing in this? That tells me that it's maybe a hype driven narrative or at, at the very least their, their ability to communicate about what they're doing is not caught up with people's ability to speculate on it. That, no, just, I wanted to piggyback on that because that, that, that's a better way to phrase one of the things I've been talking about. So I'm, I'm doing the video today about, you know, like, we did the toe dip, you know, the bare minimum. Yeah. Uh, and then, you know, the next one. So like, you know, wait, waiting up to your knees kind of thing. Um, and if you, if so, like, like Evan just said, if, if you're not researching a project, you're not like learning about it, or what does it do? Why does it exist? You know, what was the piece of good news? Um, you won't know why price is doing a thing. And if you don't know enough about the project to determine why the price might be doing a thing, then that is the moment in which you will make a bad decision. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you, if your first instinct, when you see like, oh, token X is up 80% today, what happened? And your first instinct is to either quickly buy some or quickly go to social media and listen to, or like ask an influencer, like, do I buy now? Is it too late? Like that, that's the setup. That's the setup and the tee off to make a bad decision. You get wrecked a hundred percent. And that's what I'm seeing with the fact that SEI reveals nothing to me about why people might be buying it yet. They are like, that's, that's, that's a recipe for FOMO, bad decisions, all that. I'm, I'm definitely not going to like, it's good to know though. Like I'm not picking on you. Thank you for telling me that it surpassed Sui in market cap because that's the, that's oh. the kind of research data point that makes me say, oh, this is probably not for me right now. Yeah. yeah. No, but absolutely. So that, but that's what I'm saying. Like you should, you should see the indication like, Hey, something's happening. Um, and then get off of social media real quick and go like to the news, the, the, you know, go to crypto panic and see if you can find the headlines about it, go to Twitter, uh, and see if you can find a link out to, you know, uh, an article about it, uh, or, you know, what announcement was just made. You know, go to the social channels for the project itself, go to their website, go to whatever, you know, something just some clearly something happened. Projects don't just do, you know, 60, 50, 70, 90, 100 and whatever percent for absolutely no reason, like something lit a fire, um, you know, and if you don't dig any further, then you will make a bad decision.
Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I'm speaking from a lot of experience there. It's happened to me multiple times. I mean, you know, the, the, the buy the rumor, sell the news is also like a trope in our, our space for like a, a, a good reason. Um, but, but I always like to like to look, one of my favorite things to verify is like, do I know another company who's doing this kind of thing? Even if they're not in crypto, if they're in web two, that's helpful too. What, what is a realistic market determined price for a more mature company that is trying to do what this company is trying to do? That will help me one, if it's something new that I don't know about, learn a little more about an industry, but also it will really help me gauge like, is, is this realistically priced in a way that it should be? If it's not, like, why would I buy it? I'm too late. Yeah. You know? Well, and two, I like to know uh, about the space that they're trying to get into. Because, like, mm -hmm. this was my whole point with real world assets as a narrative. Um, like, there is no denying that it's a strong narrative and it's got steam and there there is excitement around it. And Larry Fink talked about it and whatever, right? But if I zoom out a little bit and I talk, I look at like, okay, let's forget the crypto thing for a second and just look at the space that this is talking about. Like what kind of assets are we talking about specifically? You realize like this is a space where in order to do business with this stuff, you need to have licenses. You need to register with this and you need to register with that. And there's different insurances that you have to carry. And it's very heavily regulated. And there's all sorts of restrictions about what you can do, what you can't do, blah, 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 blah. blah. Now you add crypto to the top of it and all of a sudden now I look at real world assets and I'm like, okay, short term, huge potential to do crazy things in price. So if you're a trader, if you're a short term investor, if like you feel like, you know, sitting there kind of staring at it, maybe there's something for you there. Maybe there's a chance that you can make some decent money on something like that. Uh, but if I zoom out, like that's not how I operate. I'm a terrible day trader. Um, you know, I like to play in the meme casino sometimes, but I treat it like a slot machine. You know, I, I walk up with 20 bucks and we're all in discord VC. And if I win, I win. If I lose, I expected to lose. And, um, and then, uh, so I like to buy stuff and, you know, tuck it away in my wallet and come back to it in a couple of years. So if I look at the real world assets narrative, I'm like, okay, I believe in these companies, these projects to like get the short term hype and like do some big stuff and probably give me some good setups if I know how to trade them. But mm -hmm. do I really think they're going to take a product to full market and like be regulated and all this stuff like no time soon? Yeah, no way. And so that influences my like long term perspective on whether or not I think this thing has, you know, teeth to go the distance kind of thing. Um, Alex, can I ask you about um, a video I want to make um, and everybody listening, obviously I want to ask you too. So you know my thing um, that the fundamental issue of incentives that crypto is here to solve is like we can do something better than money as a tool to transact, to access the actual resources that give us the fullness of life, groceries, rent, food, stuff like that, represent the achievements, the intangible things that matter to us. I got a comment on a video the other day where I was talking about this specifically in the context of the TikTok ban, someone was saying, you know, if we want real change, and I hear this a lot on TikTok, if we want real change, we need to pick an issue that people on both sides of the aisle fundamentally agree on, set aside our minute differences, put our collective heft behind that issue, and focus on it until it's done. Then we move on to the next issue together. And by going issue by issue, their claim was, we could snowball our momentum and energy and become a not only more organized and coordinated force, but that energy over time could tackle bigger and bigger issues by attracting more people. Makes sense in theory, but the problem I have with that is the incentive thing. As long as the incentive for everyone in the context of like our system, broadly speaking, is money is the means to accumulate stuff. And in a capital system, power flows to the center, government representatives, business owners, Musks, Gates, those people, they not only have more influence, but their ability to accumulate more is heightened because they have more capital. And you and I, our resistance to them is dependent on our ability to forego that. Like to say, I'm not going to spend money. I'm going to homestead. I'm going to learn to treat my own wounds instead of going to a hospital. At some point, that becomes hard. It's difficult to sustain. It's fatiguing. Eventually, because the incentive is capital, you got you to gotta step back. Like most people will have to, it's not realistic for everybody to resist that long, especially people at the edges who don't have power. So 
I made a video explaining that, talking about how you know decentralized systems money could be a you know a hypothetical solution. They are viable if they get enough traction. We support them. We adopt them. They can sort of come alongside and then overtake when people see this might be a better way to do things. Um, we got to model it. Then we can build it. Then it will grow. And somebody said, you know, I I. I'm into this, but I think a lot of people like me are confused about decentralized currency, about blockchain. And we would like to, you know, cooperate and coordinate and align our incentives. And I want to make a video responding to say like, okay, but it's just too overwhelming. Like, how do I, where would you start to say, I want to say to this person, the fact that you want to coordinate with others, align incentives and build something better shows me that you understand it better than you think you do. But I acknowledge the terminology is difficult. Learning about it from people, especially on TikTok, is hard, not just because we don't talk about it well, but because it's, it's a lot to learn. Um, so that I don't overwhelm this person in like an eight minute video, what would be, where would you start to acknowledge that to them? And like, I want the flavor to be encouraging. You know more than you think you do and bridge like just one concept that is maybe a crypto concept to help them have a light bulb moment that makes them want to learn more. What would you say? Um, all right. The uh, pressure of mass adoption is on your shoulders, Alex. It's coming down to you. <laughs> luck, luckily, I spend a lot of time thinking about this in the shower driving. <laughs> um, I so it's, it's such a good question from the perspective of an educator, because oh, I just don't at, as a, as a teacher, that's the thing that you're always looking for. Like what's going to be the thing like that, that's what, that's what really gets you going is when you see it in someone's face, like, oh, they get it. And like, oh, that's so fucking cool. Uh, with this for me and, and crypto and blockchain, it's always just, I always just ask people one question and it, 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 I've never had it not start a good conversation about it. Um, and it's usually just like, how, how much do you enjoy asking daddy for permission to do everything? Cause that's the underlying thesis. That's the whole point. That's my whole point with like, why should I take the time to learn how to read a blockchain explorer as my first skill in crypto? It's because the only reason that crypto is, has any value whatsoever, literally the only reason I'll fight anybody about this literally the only reason it has any value at all is because you can verify anything anyone ever tells you about it completely for free and completely by yourself without like any more than just the basic modicum of technical understanding so that that would be it that uh, that's it for me like if what you value is transparency and the ability to make a decision for yourself without having to ask for permission. If you want to actually own like your property and not have to just like trust some corporation to let you use it, you can apply that to anything. Uh, and money is just the easiest one to talk about because you if you, if you use uh, the US dollar um, in any form other than cash, and honestly, even, even with cash, cash big you're kind of getting in the weeds there, um, but especially just if you use a debit card, credit card, Venmo, Cash App, PayPal, bank transfer, wire, Zelle, any of that stuff, you're, you're not doing anything. You're asking a company for permission to do the thing you're trying to do. So like, uh, you know, that, that's, that, that's probably where I would start with someone is like, you could boil the whole thing down to one question is how, how much do you wish that you could make a decision about your finances without having to ask somebody else for permission? And then you can use that to snowball into anything else. But I think, I think to do what you're talking about, it's gotta be super short and super punchy and it can't be a long winded kind of like philosophical or theological answer, yeah. you know, like 
it just can't. And I'm glad that you brought that up because I saw you, I saw you make that video. I saw you reply to the video that you were replying to. That was the impetus for yours. Um, and I, I think I disagree with, with your take. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. I'm Not to brain. say that I think that it is a much more deep and complex issue. So I, I don't really disagree with what you said. I just, I think that I would say that you could get the momentum by if, if we picked a tiny thing, because I've, I've made this exact video before too. Um, if we, if we collectively picked a tiny thing and just did it, I think people would suddenly realize like, holy shit, we are actually in charge. It's just that we spend all of our time fighting with each other. So nothing ever gets done, you know, like, um, so pick, pick a thing that's like small and achievable. I'm you know watching who, the Kellogg's boycott for that. For example, people, sure. that seems to be an idea that has traction that seems big enough, but small enough that might actually work. Yeah, you, you know, what's really funny is one of my favorite uh, examples of this idea came from Arnold Schwarzenegger. Okay. Um, he, he was, so he has like, I think it's a three part docu-series on Netflix or something. And it's like him as the bodybuilder, him as the actor and him as the politician. And it was like a, a chunk about each thing. Um, and it's super interesting. Like, 100% recommend to watch Arnold Schwarzenegger's docu-series. But when in the in the politician episode, someone asked him um, how he would or he, what he would do. I forget what the setup to the question was, but it was something to the effect of uh, global warming or the climate crisis or something like what's your take on it? How would you handle it? Whatever. And he was like, it was just brilliant. I've never thought about it this way ever. And he was like, the whole thing should be the easiest thing for all of us to agree on. Like, regardless of what you like to do here on Earth, you need Earth to do it. So, like, if we can't agree on that, then it's clearly a different issue. Um, you know, and it comes down to control. But he's like, I think all of climate crisis and the gl and global warming or whatever, regardless of your opinion on it, it's all, uh, it's all just a marketing problem. And he's like, stop going after people and trying to take their car away. Stop trying to tell them what they can and can't eat. Stop trying to just find a thing that will help that you know we can all agree on and he's like and that's got to be just stop throwing your trash on the ground so he's like what if we all just collectively agreed to like work on littering as a problem and he's like and fuck everything else just like start with just like start with start with that um it's not a deflection from Kellogg to Arnold. Yeah, I think it's Kellogg, a deflection at all. Kellogg is a good example too. My my point is just to say, yeah, you you take a little thing like that that like we could agree on, and that's what you start with, and you use yeah. that you use the fact that we could succeed at that without a hundred percent cooperation, uh, and use that to like snowball. I I totally agree with the snowball idea that like momentum begets momentum begets momentum, and so to Arnold's point there. You know, if we all could, could, would anyone who's not trying to be a troll find any issue with like, hey, can we just like agree to stop throwing so much trash on the ground? Can we just agree to like hold on to it a little bit more until you get to a trash can? And like, so, so for me, the yes the issue movement. that's at the bottom is like, wouldn't it be great if everyone had the ability to access the fullness of life? Like, if everyone could experience the fullness of life. I, yeah. I realize that's such a pie in the sky thing that it makes sure. it difficult. What does that mean? Littering, everybody knows what it means. Just break I'm it down. To find a way to say that. Because um, like but... one of the things that I've thought about before was like, okay, if anyone in here has ever been to Switzerland, you'll no, know. Tell me about it. Switzerland is one of the cleanest places I've ever been. However, it comes at a price and we couldn't just, we couldn't just go from where we are now to Switzerland's system. Okay. So like in Switzerland, once a week, there is just this event in most neighborhoods. Uh, I've been there multiple times myself where you go and you do your recycling and it takes you two to three hours, but it's like a community event. Everyone goes there. You're going to see all of your neighbors, all your friends, your families there. You're splitting your recyclables into like 17 different categories and carefully sorting and mixing all of this stuff. Uh, if you litter, you basically get like shot out of a cannon into the sun. The, the fines and the punishments for littering are astronomical, uh, but nobody litters because you just know like, no, I'm, you know, I've got recycling day coming up on Tuesday. I'm going to go see everyone. There's like food. Uh, there's like music playing. It's just like, it's turned into a thing, but you could never 
tell the average American, and I completely agree, I wouldn't be able to do this myself. You can never say, no, go from where you are right now to spending three hours every Tuesday doing your recycling, right? Like how, how ridiculous does that sound from our perspective? It's insane. So uh, you got to like figure out, okay, what's the halfway thing? And it's literally just stop mm. throwing your trash on the ground. Just keep your trash until you get to a receptacle. And that's literally the whole thing and start with there. Yeah. So that's a huge tangent. But my point is like with crypto and blockchain and all of this kind of stuff, I would, I would never go straight to, you know, the pros and cons of like complex yield farming through a DeFi no. protocol with whatever. I would just, I would just simply say, you know, all you need to do, all you need to understand to recognize the value of blockchain and a cryptocurrency is the idea that you get to just decide what you do with your money. And you don't have to ask Bank of America for permission. And that's the whole thing. You could stop right there. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for the, thank you for the answer. It's tough. And that's the, that's the core tenet of persuasion is, is find something that the most people can say yes to, and you will win the argument. You will win the attention of the people. If they can say yes to you, they will continue to pay attention. Um, Alex, remind me, uh, Popovich, it's not Serbian. It's, uh, it's, uh, where do your where do your people hail from? I well, I always mix up my tiny European countries. No no no, it's good. Uh, name is Serbian. I'm Romanian. That's right, Romanian, Romanian, Romanian. Um, um sorry, there's a there was a lot of really. There's good a ton comments. of comments. I can sum them up for you because I was I was trying to make sure we didn't miss any any bangers. Tori had a banger uh, on your point about it's like puddles coming together so we can do more apart. Water. That was a really good analogy. Um, somebody asked about uh, zigzag said, by the way, nice disturbed shirt. And I said, remind me to have Alex tell you about the concert experience. You went with your mom and your sister, right? Yeah, dude, it was amazing. Um, yeah, dude, it was nuts. David sounded like he, they did, they did. It was like a pure nostalgia tour. This particular tour was like them going to underappreciated cities. So like every, every uh, venue was relatively small compared to what disturbed could sell out, I'm sure. Um, it was really cool, but dude, David sounded like he did when he recorded the sickness literally 24 years ago. It was, it was, it was wild. I couldn't believe what I, you're, cause I, I think I had like just seen a video of Axl Rose doing, uh, welcome to the jungle. And I was like, if I paid for that, I would be so angry. Oh dude, he was bad. <laughs> and, uh, he's, he's, he's besmirching his legacy and like, dude, disturbed I don't know. I've, I've said for so many years that if I had to narrow it down and pick like only one band to listen to that, like scratched the itch for me, it would probably be disturbed. And so yeah. getting, getting to go see them was really, really cool. It was, he's a, he's a technically uh, proficient oh vocalist. Like he, the reason his voice oh, yeah. sounds that good is because he really, he has phenomenal technique um, that really takes care of his voice. I've heard him talk about his, you know, his routine and and her you know voice teachers point to disturbed over and over and over as an example of like if you want to be like you know screaming or you know doing hardcore music like yeah. there is a way to do it and be legit and do it forever and this is it he's he's a paragon of vocal health excellent yeah, him, him and um the the front man the lead singer of uh iron maiden like who is a classically trained opera singer Oh, really? uh, and, and you can tell go listen to like rhyme of the ancient mariner uh which is one of the greatest rock ballads ever written of, based on an awesome poem but it was so cool i don't know that i've ever seen him uh bruce dickinson he looks like mickey rourke <laughs> mickey yeah. rourke's got to play him in the movie little little dude i mean the the band is huge um but oh, yeah. but uh, evan if you don't if you haven't listened to iron maiden like definitely, uh, there's a there's an album called Power Slave, and I would start there. Okay, Power Slave, I'll check it out. I, I have heard Iron Maiden songs, but I've never really like sat oh. down and been like, I'm gonna listen to Iron Maiden today. Maybe that's Power where I'll listen. The I'm first album, together. the first album that I received is like my own mm -hmm. uh, album. It was I was in first grade, and my dad got me Power Slave and do the Focus Kid says Britney Spears is better. So I don't know, man. Uh, Fun fact, one of my favorite songs to play live uh, right now is Hit Me Baby One More Time. I'm pretty sure I'm the only guy who covers that on guitar, <laughs> at least in Memphis, and I absolutely love singing it. It's a great song.
Okay, so so take me back to crypto. Let me yep. know if you missed your question. Uh, I've got I've got probably you know I can I can go for another thirty minutes. I'm feeling strong. Um, I don't know, Alex. While we're talking about uh, our show and our, our our stuff, I don't know that I can do a rise up after dark this week. I have a a rough weekend. Yeah, that's all right. Um, would that be okay? Would you be Would you be Would you cry about it? No, it'll it'll we'll be all we'll be all right. Okay, Some, somebody had asked about that before. Are you going to do a late night live? Probably not this week. Yeah. We've got a lot going on, but we are going to post a YouTube video. Um, we're going to sit down and record that later today, as well as a couple of others, get them in the tank. Um, yeah. So, you know, I got I got, a, I got about 30 more minutes before I, I uh, ride my pony off into the sunset. Works what do me. you want to know? So you as your, your residents will welcome in, we, we, did, we did cover... Uh, I yell. I yelled a little bit about the whole Sinkus thing, oh, yeah. um, but no. Bare, Bare Naked had a one of his classic videos about it, where he did. He brought a whole lot of receipts, and he he shared a lot of like social media posts, kind of digging back into the um, the chronicles of the various influencers. I, I thought he did a great job breaking it down, um, and you know he put his, of course, his his flavor of spice. Uh, into the takedown. It was a it was a really good one. I I commented on it. Um, but no, I mean I I maintain. Uh, Will Watson he posted a video about Sinkus yesterday too, and I'm just like, dude, any influencer who shilled Sinkus was a dipshit or just criminally underinformed and didn't care that they were underinformed. <laughs> Which is a, yeah, and and you know it's rough. They're still posting. Uh, when we talked about it at the start of the hour, I was just wanted to catch up with their Twitter to see what it looked like over there, and uh, it's a bloodbath, man. It's like it's like Gary Gensler's comments. You know, I can't sell you guys rug. Da 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 da, and they're just totally ignoring it. Yep. Not a good look. No. Not a good look at all. Really. Truly. I mean, it's, it's like I said. This I. I was never, a, I don't like structures like that. So I was never a fan. And the second that sell tax went in, I was like, this is the sign of worse things to come. And if you are still in this, you should fucking leave. Uh, and that is financial advice. Like if this is what the team is doing to you, it's going to get worse. Uh, and yet still these big, dude, these people with hundreds of thousands, if not more followers are still like, no guys, hold the line. And I'm like, you should go to jail. You should be in prison. <laughs> you should be topped. <laughs> you should be you. Yeah, you should be in prison for for doing this. Oh my gosh! When do you think that reckoning is going to come? Not soon enough. I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> oh my gosh! Yeah, it's you know, it's time. It's really time. And it would be so great to have a precedent we could point to and be like, see, see, I told you. Uh, yep. Not that I want to be, you know, we're already curmudgeon but but, uh, you know, it's See, uh, this, is, this is what I'm saying. I, I said this yesterday, too, because um, it was funny. I haven't seen Bare Naked's videos come up on my feed very often. And yesterday, the Sinkus one came up, um, watched the entire thing, thought it was good, left him a comment. And I just like it's it makes no sense that we're not like connected because he, he's gone back and forth on blocking me for like no reason. Yeah. Right. I think that guy has blocked me like three different times. And I'm always just like, dude, why? Like he's never spoken to me once, but he's made multiple videos about blocking me before. And I'm like, what are we, what are we doing here, dude? Like, have you ever watched anything I said? I'm pretty sure we'd be friends, but. But you know, you that's know. what baffles me. I've said that before. I said, I, I think when, cause like sometimes he's incendiary and, but he just, he seems, yeah. he seems mercurial. Not that I, you know, look at me using all these, he seems like somebody who is hot and then cold all the time. And yeah. when he gives a good take though, I'm always like, it honestly almost always makes me think of you. I'm like, oh, you know, this sounds like something Alex would say. I think That's... his name is Tony. I don't know him personally, oh, I don't but know. Uh, your resident sent me one of his videos. This is bare naked crypto we're talking about. Um, and it had been taken down already. Um, I, I get it. You know, you, you got to have a brand. You got to have a voice. But like, uh, I feel like I feel like we would get along. I don't know. I I feel like I'm I'm pretty incendiary. I think I just I think I just said and cl clip it and post it ever. I, I don't care. Like half of these people should be in prison. You have incendiary moments. I think I think I think you have incendiary moments. I think you're too. I don't, I wouldn't call you incendiary. Is Alex incendiary? I'm, I'm I am being I am being that. Well, that's kind of my point. 
Um, and after yesterday, when I like hate watched one of those particular influencer meme shill fests lives for a little bit, and they were literally just strategically, that's a strong word for what they were doing. They were deploying all of their viewers to just like go nuke other people's lives and complain about, um, and co go complain about, or, uh, complain about them not like talking about their meme coin or whatever. I'm like, you guys are pathetic. Uh, well, you've got two minutes to decide. Is Alex incendiary? <laughs> I, will, I, I will completely agree with, with, with Ampro. Definitely not on, on bare naked's level. He's, uh, that, I mean, that's his, that's his flavor. That's his brand. You know who I miss? I really miss Jeff the Dunker. He has mostly retreated to other areas of the internet, and I'm so sad about it. TikTok is honestly not, not as good because Jeff he was, is not. He was incendiary. He was incendiary, yeah. truly incendiary, and did it in a bathrobe. Yep. So you a know, Gucci bathrobe. A Gucci bathrobe, some Viper sunglasses with a rare Pepe on his wall behind him. I'm sorry. It wasn't a Gucci robe. It was a Versace robe. It was so. something. It was something. <laughs> and there's never been another quite like him. He had a, you know, a yep. legendary TikTok run. And I am in his Discord and occasionally see him. He, he's building stuff, doing doing real crypto stuff. Thank God. Um, but I miss him. I really miss him. I would put him in a battle royale against anybody any day. You know? In my opinion, TVL is a terrible metric, but everyone loves it because it's an easy to look at number. Maybe a hot take. Uh, I think it's helpful when you're talking, I find it helpful to evaluate something like a DeFi protocol, but it also could be in a big project, a lot of salty bag holders just yeah. waiting for the day that their crypto comes back and locking their crypto up in the meantime. What do you think, Alex? I would agree. I would not agree that it's a terrible metric, but I would agree that if what you mean by that is that if you are only looking at TVL total value locked, yeah, thank um, you, thank you, uh, that you would be doing yourself dirty. Like I, I maintain the only number that you should ever use as like a singular metric indicator would be liquidity availability. How much liquidity is 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 present to facilitate trading? But beyond that, I think TVL is a great number to put like on your list of things to consider you know like it would it should be a piece of your of your um compiled research it should definitely not be the only thing and i definitely would agree i think the reason maybe you made that comment is because i've seen a lot of stuff where people are like hey man just go to DeFi llama if the tbl is high then full send yeah yeah no single metric should be a full send for you you could consider total value locked meaning how much money have people put into this this protocol, how much money is behind the counter at this business, which is yeah. different from liquidity, which is how much money is in the pot for you to be able to withdraw at any given time. There might be multiple pools of liquidity in multiple places, which to me is a pretty good indicator. I like that when you can, you know, get a token here, get a token there, get a token here, get a token there. It's like being able to buy your favorite brand in many different stores. And market cap, it's the one people talk about the most, is just how many tokens are in circulation at what price this is the market cap right. together they are a better picture of what is this telling me than any one of them is alone and you know you shouldn't stop there i i know some people who just they just look at numbers like that if you want people who just look at numbers people have talked about DeFi daddy in the comments he doesn't just look at numbers um i've had some conversations with him stream some of his lives a little more technical he's probably not going to always sit and break down concepts from a 50,000 foot view. But if you're interested in looking at numbers on different protocols, seeing charts, hearing someone interpret them and give you reasons for why they think what they think in real time, that's a good spot. And also magic, internet, money. Uh, no vibes, just data. Although he's pretty vibing, if I, if I say so myself. I, I would agree though with the overall sentiment there. Um, just that TVL is definitely one of those numbers that can be manipulated. And honestly, the most recent example of like a, what I would honestly call a misleading TVL, even though I enjoy the ecosystem, is when Coinbase injected a metric shitload of money into the base ecosystem, which would definitely change value perception, even though it had nothing to do with like customer sentiment. It had everything to do with like company behind the ecosystem trying to bolster its staying power. 
uh, or just like make more things available. Not to say that it was a bad move by them to do that, but if that's the only thing you were looking at, then 100%, you know, you could be, you could be misled. So I, I think that's a really fair statement. Tori says, oh my God, I appreciate that, but it gets so boring. That's why I'm all vibes, no data. I am somewhere in the middle. I'm somewhere in the middle. Yeah. I, the vibes, the vibes to me are as I would say maybe a little more important than the data, but to me, the day, the vibes are a data point, like hard to quantify vibes, which is why, no, but, up, but, but I, I think that people's in, in crypto people's inability to be a little bit bored is the number one thing that leads them to getting screwed. That's a really good observation. Honestly, that's an underrated take. Uh, would you elaborate on that? If you're, I mean, at some point, so, okay. If you take any one of those like side hustles, um, sure, Amazon like machines, yeah, vending machine, Amazon, FBA, some kind of like, you know, mortgage contract arbitrage, like all of those things, right? Like it sounds really, it sounds really good on the, on the thumbnail, you know, like I, I work for three hours a week and I make $10,000 a month off of this side hustle. And then you start to look into it and you realize that it's like, there's some really boring parts of it. Okay. And like the first thing I have to do is take this class and get registered here and then download this and then do this and then spend 25 hours combing this website to find this one contract and arbitrage this and sell it over here and do whatever. And it's like, now that's boring. And that's yes. when everyone stops uh, doing it. And crypto is the same thing. If you're like, nah, I'm just trying to get rich quick. I'm just trying to like do the thing. I want someone to tell me, you know, like, Hey, this project looks really good. And then I'm willing to lose the money. I'll throw a grand into it. Maybe it works out. Maybe it doesn't, whatever. Um, but the thing that's separating you from like crushing it is to put yourself in the position of the person who like made the call, who might've done more research and they were willing to be a little bored. So I think if you're, if you're, if you are unable to be a little bored without your attention span getting the best of you and taking you somewhere else to something more captivating, uh, especially in crypto, I think, yeah, the inability to be a little bit bored is going to get everybody hosed. Um, can I can I make a real quick pitch for the newsletter to say this last week in the newsletter, I threw two contests in there and maybe I buried the lead. Uh, Somebody said buy my course and that's why I wanted to pitch it. <laughs> the newsletter is totally free. Um, and we are giving you, we're trying to incentivize you to give us more feedback because we're trying to build uh, free courses, paid courses. We're trying to build the most value possible that can sustain the show, draw more people to the community and just make us all better. But the newsletter, totally free. We're gonna pay you if you do this. Uh, I had a contest in the newsletter. It wasn't even a contest. It was an incentive to get you on Warpcast and on Zora. Uh, if you haven't got it, I'll put it in the newsletter again, but I was gonna give 100 DGEN to somebody who filled out a testimonial, just four bucks, but I was also going to give 50,000 in joy to somebody who minted for free one of the collectibles I made from the Bitcoin having on Zora. And 50,000 in joy tokens, I have a bigger in joy allowance than I do uh, let me see really quick what that is. One, uh, 10, 100, 1,000, 10,000. That's $15, okay? So if you want to get $15 or $4 for totally free, listen, you don't got to buy a darn thing. Go sign up for the newsletter by tapping my face, tapping Alex's face or visiting the riseupmorningshow.com. The extra benefit is you are going to get on a social platform. You are going to get uh, proximity to all the best builders in crypto and, and be early, truly early to like an investment that will just return over and over and over again. If you don't get the newsletter, also let me know, like send me a DM because it comes once a week on the weekends. I'm really aiming to send it Saturdays. Saturday is the day I'm really trying to send it. I've learned recently that the cardinal rule of content creation is don't post on Friday uh, from my good friend Alex here. So Saturday is what we're aiming for. If you don't get it, let me know. I'll put it in the newsletter. And what we're asking for is like, you know, mint a collectible on Zora or fill out a Google form that'll take you 30 seconds. The questions are like, what suggestions do you have for the show? And what do you want? What questions did you want to know when you learned about crypto? And why do you like to watch that? That's like it. It's painless, so painless. And the rest of it is just value. Good links, all the good stuff from the show. Pitch is over. My face, his face, the rise up morning show.com. DM me if you haven't gotten it. Then go win some crypto.
Ten four, love it. Thank you, Glover. I know you're on there. I've seen your name. And that's right. If you uh, if you use the links in our bios to just jump into Warpcast, the referral links, that gifts us warps. Um, doesn't cost you anything extra, but it requires warps to launch a channel. Um, it gives you warp too. It gives you warp too. So it's good. What is a warp? A warp is like a, a unit of instead of having to buy to pay. If you gift each other warps and receive warps from people, then you can do more stuff on Farcaster. You yep. won't have to pay the subscription fee. You can pay it in warps. You can open up a channel. You can gift warps to people and curry their favorite, that kind of stuff. Yep. Um, the future of social media is here and it's on chain. Robbie, real quick, if you are in our Discord, I would, in just in the general chat, tag Mac and ask him about both of those. I think he's got videos about both of them, but both of those projects are ones that Mac knows more about than I do, uh, especially Aether. Um, but game, the 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 gaming one, we've been on their show. I've been in their Discord. I've talked to their team. I don't know a ton about the project. I just liked them as people. Um, but mm -hmm. if you're in the Discord, we can definitely like cover it more specifically and all that kind of stuff. And also, Robbie, this is the other thing we're we're trying to figure out like the best way. Uh, not a lot of people want to get on Discord. Like, I love that you're there. A lot of people are there. Thank you for being there and hanging out. But a lot of folks in our audience uh, who are on TikTok are not Discord people. And so we were thinking about trying to find another community landing place. And we were also thinking about, let me know what you think about this. Because we don't want to bilk you guys for, for anything that's not valuable, but we think it would probably be valuable for a couple of people who really want to know, like, what do you think about this project? Uh, to start a a telegram a group chat of some kind and make it a, a low fee subscription service uh, low fee high value ask us a question get a very informal video back of like hey here's me this is this is what I'm thinking about when I'm doing my research I'm looking at this I'm looking at that check out the team did you think about this uh, you know back and forth much more personal less like hey I'm making a TikTok video that's general for the top of the funnel and more like you know People want to know. We miss questions on the show. Would that be valuable to you, Robbie? Um, let me know. And also let me know, like, at what price price that would seem like this is way too cheap or this is a bargain or, oh, my God, that's expensive. I wouldn't pay that. Um, you know, because we, we we want to figure out what's what's good for people. Um, what's the problem ZigZag's having here? Just that the Discord link wasn't wasn't working. So Evan and I are also in the process of trying to set up like a home for the community on a little bit more user friendly platform than Discord, because I'll be the first to admit every time too that Discord is a little bit mm -hmm. prohibitive. It, mm -hmm. It's not it's not phenomenal, especially if you're just like trying to go in and get like a specific thing. It can be very confusing. And our Discord server is pretty big. So there's like a lot of stuff in there. I try to have it pretty gated so that if you just come in and just verify that you're a human, you barely see any channels. But even still, in order to like meet community recognition guidelines by Discord, uh, I have to have so many public channels. So even if you only have the bare minimum of, of rules that you're still like 12 channels that you have to look at and it's it's a little bit much, but um, all you there's there's a channel in there called general and that's that's really all you need to do if you are interested in getting in there. But if you hate Discord and you just can't stand it, don't worry about it. Don't feel like you have to do it. We'll have a better option set up hopefully yeah. in, the, in the next. Hopefully by the end of this quarter is like our goal. We're, we're researching platforms right now. We've looked at Circle. We're looking at School. Um, but you know, our goal is to have, have folks come in from maybe Facebook, from LinkedIn, from TikTok, obviously, YouTube, and then we'll have a place that everybody can kind of like gather and live because what I hope for, you know, Alex and I are here talking on the show. It's great when we can have conversations with you that aren't limited by characters. And also when you can like share, I'm, ex I'm excited, Alex, for when people in the community can do more to share like, okay, here's what I'm working on. When we can have a talk with Tori uh, or a talk with Robbie or a talk with whoever is building, working on something, you know, uh, maybe a new user is setting up their wallet for the first time. And that's going to be the theme this week is like a live wallet setup. And, you know, new users will really value that. Um, I don't know. And people can start talking to each other. It's not going to be just about us, um, even though we are pretty cool. Like, you guys are so cool. <laughs> and it sucks that we can't all talk. 
Um, community, man. Community. No data, just vibes. Warpcast, the Warpcast channel is definitely going to happen. Yeah, um, I expect that to be a, a small niche, especially for, especially in the beginning. Yeah, the thing about a Warpcast channel is it's just, it, you know, it's hard to, um, it's crypto native for sure. We want you there. We want more people there because we want you to experience the benefits of that platform. Um, but can't do live streaming video. We couldn't host like a, a chat room. We couldn't put a course there that we had filmed that you could just go to in one click and watch at your convenience. You know, it would be definitely part of the stable, but we're thinking something like that. Not overwhelming, but a hub. Yeah. A space a hub. Even, yeah, exactly. even if it's, you know, also just meant to help demonstrate to impactful people on Warpcast that, you know, this is a serious thing worth paying attention to so that I can get Dan Romero on the show. Yeah, man. Let's get Dan in here. He, I mean, you know, why stop there? Um, uh, it'd be great to get Vitalik. <laughs> Actually, that might be weird. Could you imagine interviewing Vitalik? Um, yeah, the next upgrade we want to do, he's, he's such a unique character. I would absolutely, if anyone ever gets the chance to talk to Vitalik and you don't take it, you're an idiot. Like, I don't care what you think about the whole thing. Like that, that is such an interesting, he's such an enigmatic individual. I don't even know what we would talk about because I'm, I don't think I'm smart enough to have a conversation about crypto with Vitalik, but God, I would love it. Absolutely not. Um, Alex, we got two good questions here. Um, so let's address this one first because it's it's easy and simple. I don't know if you have an opinion on FriendTech. Um, have you seen FriendTech, another decentralized social? It was pre-Farcaster and it was sort of had like an exclusive feel to it. Um, I believe it was also backed by A16Z, um, but they kind of had a dip probably because Farcaster had such awesome user experience. Mishiste wanted to know, do we think it'll make a comeback? Do you have an opinion on it? And if not, I have, I have two sentences I can give you. Um, I don't think that my opinion about FriendTech should be taken too seriously because I don't really know that much about it. But the only thing I remember thinking about it was that when it was kind of popping off, I don't remember people being particularly excited about it. I feel like there was a lot of negativity around it. And so that was kind of the thing that stuck out in my head that makes me think like maybe it was just a swing and a miss just because I, I don't know. I, I never used it. Yep. Same. I could very easily have just been kind of stuck into a little echo chamber of friend tech haters, which is very possible. But I just remember getting the feeling that like generally people didn't like that thing. I felt like the it seemed to financialize. So for people who don't know, FriendTech was a, a platform. It was launched in 2023 that had a lot of consumer crypto insiders. You probably didn't hear about it unless you were like, you know, in the know. Um, that was a social token platform. So I get on the platform, I have a token. Alex joins the platform, he buys my token. And if I remember correctly, the more tokens you trade, the more expensive your token becomes. And so like, if you guys get on and you see, oh, Evan's been on friend tech for a minute, he's got a lot of friends, you're, you're not gonna be able to like buy my token because it's prohibitive to you, it's too expensive. Dracula's having this kind of problem right now too. They sell creator tokens, but if you're a popular creator, your token is expensive to collect. Um, I, I, I think that's a, a problem there that they led with that like that's an incentive that gets people to want to come. They're like, oh, people will buy my token. I will come there. But whereas Warpcast kind of led with be here, interact with cool people. They put that first. Um, yep. The incentive kind of came behind it and there was a low barrier to entry in terms of cost. Friend Tech is launching a V2 that I know nothing about. Their marketing efforts remind me of a, a crypto company that knows, you know, they've been through the bear and other people have built more exciting stuff and they've got to bring users back somehow. What are they going to do? I don't know if they'll be able to execute on it and would welcome your opinions, Mike, if you are there. He said he's scooping up keys while they're cheap. Maybe a good speculative play, but yep. they're going to have to do something special if they're going to get attention and users. They do, though, have the platform and the name recognition. So if they did make a sweeping shift that changed the structure over there and like made it more appealing, then I could it would probably have an easier time popping off than something starting from scratch. But, you know, I think I would agree it, it would probably require a, 
a, a business pivot. Alex, um, let me ask you this question. This is this is an important question. I support the idea of crypto, but recently it took a hit with some bad actors. Can you address? Yeah, I don't think recently it took a hit. I think it's been taking hits from bad actors <laughs> repeatedly from uh, from the very beginning. But it's a it's a valid concern. Anytime an industry is new, it gets populated by people who want to take advantage of the fact that a lot of people don't know that much about it. So it's easier to steal. Um, crypto provides a really beautiful and seamless vehicle to like transact financially between like one person and another. And along with that comes the vol increased vulnerability to scams because it's even easier to separate you from your money. Like if you're about to get scammed and your bank is in the middle, they might flag it as a fraudulent transaction and stop it and then warn you about it. But in crypto, there's nothing to do that because you truly do just like own and custody your own money. And, you know, if you're trying to send it to somebody who's nefarious for some reason, there's no one to be like, hey, you know, you might not want to do that. So that's an increased risk. Uh, it is technically confusing. So people who are brand new, um, and are trying to like learn and they learn by putting money into something. Um, you know, they, they are also at an increased risk for scams. And I think that's why, you know, educational content about it is so important, but, you know, it kind of goes back to my other point. If you're not willing to be a little bit bored, you're going to get hosed. Um, but yeah, I think. We kind of, we kind of just, there are a lot of scams. There's a lot of them no doubt. In, in crypto. Uh, however, the, the presence of something bad doesn't mean that the whole thing is bad. You know, it's like, there's a lot of, there, there's a lot more scams, uh, in web two than there are, than there is in web three to use the marketing term. And it's, it would be like saying that email has a, has no value as a technology just because you know billions of dollars a year are stolen through email based scams and fraud which is 100 percent valid and a legitimate problem you know but it doesn't mean that email is bad it means that shitty people are using it well and i think the thing to emphasize here alex is you said it makes it easier uh to separate to steal to separate people from their money but that's largely also because the ways we are building user interfaces, the ways we are talking about it, educating people have not caught up to the potential, the potential for the technology on chain versus just online is to increase freedom, to increase security. Um, the crypto and cryptocurrency stands for encryption. And this technology offers a lot of potential beyond what our current tech can do it makes new things possible that will make us more free more secure as we build them um and many of them exist now we just don't do a good job talking about it and joe um that's our mission here for sure is to tell a better story if you want to hear somebody speak cogently about that also in another platform the place i'd recommend you start is um chris dixon he's the lead crypto partner at andreessen horowitz a16z and he has a really great blog article that's, I think, excerpted from his book, Read, Write, Own. It's uh, just do a Google search for Chris Dixon Computer Casino. He talks a lot about regulators and how the current regulatory climate is uh, unfavorable specifically to the people building in crypto, the ones he calls the computer people, um, and kind of encourages the proliferation of the unhelpful stuff, which he calls the casino. Um, they are both two sides of the same coin, but more than being a speculative money market, crypto is totally programmable data. Um, it, it's, it's a new medium to create things like money, um, to create things like identity, to create things like story online, to give a tangible form to intangible things that are difficult to quantify in any other way. So definitely look at it more. Chris Dixon's a good resource. This is a good resource. We hope to be a good resource. Chris Dixon, casino computer. That's what I'd Google. And thank you for that question, because that's a it's an important question. A lot of room to grow. I'll uh, want to give my I give my take on the the non story Biden tax thing, just because I said it at the beginning. But yeah, we talked about it at the start, so but you didn't hear. It was a good take. There's a 
there's a headline circulating right now that Biden has proposed a dramatic increase in capital gains tax, um, specifically to long-term capital gains. So there's two things to be aware of. One, this is an old story. The original proposal came out months and months ago. No further details have really been released. It's a non-story because there are so many specific things that would need to be in this proposal for it to be valid. It will never go anywhere. They've been trying to do this for a long time. It happened last year. It happened the year before. It happens every, it, it, this exact thing happened last bull run and it didn't go anywhere. Um, there, even, even if all of the planets aligned for this guy and Congress decided to do something like, you know, legitimately quickly about this theoretical capital gains tax proposal, um, the only number we've ever gotten is that it's for uh for the so there's brackets in capital gains tax if you don't fall into the income tax bracket you don't get tax on capital gains most people pay zero in capital gains or 15. no one almost no one pays 40. like the one percent pays 40 on short term to do that you have to make more than a million dollars a year if you make more than a million dollars a year your first million is taxed at the low end and then after that million, so if you make one million and one dollar that year, the one dollar is the only part that gets applied to the higher bracket. Uh, two, this is circulating right now because several really fiery things are happening in the United States right now that they desperately don't want people to be focused on. Uh, look up how many college campuses are currently getting raided by state police. Uh, there are talks about deploying National Guard to start arresting students. Spoiler alert, any time in history where people have been arresting students for protesting, they have been on the wrong side of history. That's never not been the case. Uh, so if all of the college kids are super, super angry and there's a lot of protests happening, we probably want to distract from that a little bit. So let's get everyone pissed off about taxes. Uh, and then two, they just crammed a bill through uh, for a tremendous amount of foreign aid, including then of course the legislation to try to ban TikTok again. Um, that's making people angry. So we want to distract from that. This is a non-story because one, it's old and being recycled. Nothing new happened. Two, it's not a real proposal because there was no details. There's no specifics. There's no bracket uh, definitions. Um, and three, even if all of those first two things were true, this is in the proposal stage from a president who is potentially outgoing in less than a year. Congress will never pass anything for him uh, like this. The Democrats are not organized or um, vitriolic enough to ram something through like that. And the Republicans certainly won't help. So it's not going anywhere. Uh, and two, even if it did go somewhere, it still has to go from proposal to full legislative draft writing, which takes a very long time because Congress barely does anything. They don't work very often. Then it has to go through all of the House floor debates. Then they have to reamend it. Then they have to rewrite it. Then it has to get debated again, and then it has to get passed. And then it goes to the Senate and the Senate's going to pull the whole thing apart and do that entire process over again. And if they make even one line item change, it goes back to the House. And then the House has to sit there and do the whole thing again and reapprove it. And if they change anything, it goes back to the, and you see where I'm going with this. Mm -hmm. Like we are so far away from something like this happening because it would be such a dramatic shift um, in tax structure. And it's just simply not going anywhere. Like even if the worst should happen and all the stars aligned and it worked out perfectly for them, it's still going to take forever. So it's a non story. It's just meant to distract people is my take. Okay, Alex, I've got to ride my pony off into the sunset in a minute and I want to get okay. your final thoughts. So warm them up. I have two final thoughts. Uh, let me know yours below. The first one is for Brett specifically. If you are worried about what to buy, what to hold long term, when to sell it, when to buy it, I got a I got a resource for you. Go to our YouTube page, check out the Web3 101 tutorials playlist. The last most recent video we did is called Gut Check. It is the answer to this question. And the one that's coming next is uh, the toe dip version, the shallow version of how to do your own research, the process that Alex and I sort of use every time. That takes about five minutes. Once you do it, one time it gets easier the next time, et cetera, et cetera. And it is a springboard to conviction to start to feel better about what you're holding, what you're selling, when you're selling it, which is something we all need more of, frankly.
Find it on the YouTube channel. How do you find the YouTube channel? Tap my face, tap his face, go to the riseupmorningshow.com and you will find all the links. The link to the YouTube, the free newsletter, you should sign up for it. Uh, I'll post all the links from this show and we will be back Monday through Thursday, same time, same place, 7 a.m. Central Standard Time to answer your crypto questions. My final thought is I want to amplify what Tori says and what I believe is true, that a better world, not just some other world, a better world is possible. We're building it here. You are invited. And the many who have yet to join us, like, think about how great it's going to be. You know, when we all come together and the kind of real change we can make, it will make Congress look as slow as they are, you know. <laughs> Alex, man, what's your uh, what's your thought? You got any uh, last minute comments you want to touch? Good jokes, just, words of wisdom. No, just thanks everyone for spending your morning with us. Um, we've got a lot of lot of new faces today, which I love to see. And uh, Joe, welcome welcome in. I'm glad you dropped by. Don't worry if you're not in a position to buy any crypto. You certainly don't have to. You can do so much learning for free. Uh, and you can and actually earning. start. You for can free. start earning earning stuff for free too if you're willing to put in a little bit of effort. Um, no, per, no purchase necessary at all. Don't ever feel pressured to buy anything. Evan and I are never going to be the people who tell you you gotta you gotta pay for something. So, although if you go to our shop, you can get a, a Rise Up Morning Show coffee mug, which I, I lied. is the best we way will, to drink your coffee. We will definitely show the mug. You should get a mug. I'm bullish. <laughs> man thank you alex for another great week thank you everybody for tuning in my friends we'll see you monday until then everybody rise up